Well, well thank you very much, Tom. And um, can I start by acknowledging the traditional owners on the land on which we meet and pay my respects to elders past and present. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, my parliamentary colleagues, Nina Springle, Sonia Kilkenny and David Davis, who will be here soon. And the Morty Alec, uh, electric candidates, uh, Jeff Gledhill, Councillor Jeff Gledhill and uh, Hamish Taylor. Tonight is an opportunity to talk about the transport priorities we are working on now and into the future that will shape our community, our state and our city. It is one thing to win government, but it's another thing to do something while you're in government. When the Labor Party was elected in 2014, we had 1,461 days of that parliamentary term to make a difference and to make things count. And we've not wasted a day on that journey. We've seen substantial investments in road and rail and public transport, the likes of which we haven't seen for decades. Importantly, the Labor government is also training and supporting the next generation of workers with 10% of apprentices, trainees and cadets on major projects. And we're ensuring that Victorian jobs are put first by requiring local skill, uh, skills, local steel and local content to be provided. With more than 150,000 people calling Kingston home and with population expected to grow by 10% over the coming decade, we need to make the necessary plans for the future. On any given day, 10% of our community catch public transport. 65% of people journey to work by car. And to maintain our livability, we need to continue to leverage the Frankston train line, improve the connectivity of our bus services with our train timetables, unclog Melbourne City Loop, and upgrade and improve our local roads. When it comes to public transport, there's no more important priority than the Melbourne Metro Rail Tunnel. You see, Metro Rail will transform our network, providing more services and catering for a half a million extra services uh, during the two hour morning peak and will cut travel times by up to 25 minutes one way. And this is supported by $2 billion in extra trains, uh, 24 brand new extrapolis trains running up and down the Frankston train line, and $200 million for additional bus services and routes. Then there's of course the building and upgrading of our local roads. And for so many families, the frustration of being stuck in traffic is getting even worse. It means missing those precious family moments might be missing a birthday, the first steps of your little bubby, or that very important medical uh, appointment. That's why projects like the Morty Alec uh, Freeway are so vital and important. The road reserve has sat there too long, and now we are building this important project that has an economic return of $4 for every dollar invested. It's been talked about for decades, and finally, it will be delivered. And it will provide that missing link in the city of Kingston and take tens of thousands of vehicles off local roads. And it means no traffic on the traffic lights on this freeway, with on and off ramps at Chelsea Heights all the way through to the Ningley Bypass up north. And of course there's the unprecedented change that is occurring with the removal of level crossings across our suburb. While the level crossing removals will allow for extra train services, more than 210 trains run up and down the Frankston line each and every day, it will also greatly reduce congestion, but it will also improve safety. The generational change we are making can be found in a very local example at a level crossing in Cheltenham. It was 120 years ago when tragedy first struck at this crossing. On an afternoon, Wednesday, the 14th of December, 1898, three young school children were returning to Cheltenham Primary School. They entered the gates of the level crossing and passed the Melbourne bound train, but missed the southern bound train. And sadly, the boys didn't notice this coming in the opposite direction. The driver blew the whistle and applied the full force of his brakes. Two boys dashed across, but sadly for Harry Newitt, who was only nine years old, he was struck and lost his life. Despite being a hundred years ago, we hear countless examples of near misses and accidents across our local community, and sadly families live with that tragedy each and every day. Well, I'm proud to say that that's a level crossing that will be removed in our community, along, along with uh, Mentone, Edithal and Bond Beach, and that will improve safety and transport for our community. And it goes in addition to the 26 that we've already removed during this term of government. In our community, though, the job's not done. And we're asking for your support at the upcoming Victorian election to keep our community moving and to get things done. Thank you for the opportunity to address you tonight.